Well, if there's a downside to an online digital SAT, it's that when you get questions like this, you can't just draw on the picture like you used to be able to. But remember, you have scratch paper, you've got to redraw this shape so that you can work with it in a way that's useful. So in this case, I'm just going to use the picture they gave me because I have my iPad, but we're going to put everything on the picture right away. So radical 34 is AB, uh, AC is 3, so that's down here, and CE is 21. And they want the area of ADE, which is the big triangle. So one thing you have to recognize instantly is this question is testing similar triangles. And we could do some proofs to kind of show that they're similar, right? We have two angles that are the same. Uh, we have the right angle in each triangle plus angle A is the same, but we don't really need to go through that process. We can just kind of see, hey, we've got two triangles. They're going to be in proportion. They're going to be similar. So what we need to do is get the height of the big triangle, right? Because if we think about our reference chart, we know that the area of a triangle, so the area of the triangle, is one half base times height. And the requirement for that formula is that the base and the height have to be perpendicular to each other. And perfect, it's the right triangle, they already are. So we need to get that and we can do that using similar triangles, but you can see in order to compare DE, or in order to get DE, we're gonna need to think about how BC works, right? So this is kind of like our, our intermediate step. So that's how I would go about this, is I would use, um, I would try to get BC first, and then I would use the similar triangles. But you could do it in other ways. It just really depends on what you want to do first. The order of operations here isn't going to matter. You could get the hypotenuse of ADE instead. But let's just dive right in. The first thing I see is I've got a triangle with two sides, and it's a right triangle. So that is Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be uh, this triangle here. We're going to do a squared plus b squared is c squared. So a is 3, x is my b, and radical 34 is my c. So uh, we can very easily do this. 9 plus x squared is equal to 34. Subtract the 9. x squared is 25. And so x is 5. So nice and easy. And now we have what we need. We have two sides of the big triangle and, or we have, we can, can think about two sides of the big triangle and we have two sides of the small triangle, right? So if we're thinking about the big triangle, we're gonna use the height and we're gonna use the base. But remember the base isn't 21, the base is three plus 21, it's 24. So the way I would think of this is that the height and the base are in the same proportion for the big triangle as the height and the base of the small triangle. And so you might even just be able to see that we can have, uh, in order to get from three to 24, we would do times eight. So we'd have to do the same thing on the top to keep the proportion. If that's confusing to you, just cross multiply. So three H is equal to 24 times five is 120, divide by three and H is 40. But we're not done. And this is, this is something that we'd have to worry about even if we had multiple choices here. Remember, they with these geometry questions, especially the advanced ones, they often want us to stop short. We get like an x equals moment and we feel really good, but then we have to do something else. We have to add two sides together, or in this case, we have to go back and find the area of the triangle. But now that's really easy. It's just about plugging into the formula. So that's one half. The base is 24. The height is 40. So half of, 12, uh, half of 24 is 12, so 12 times 40 is 480, and that's it. That's the whole answer. So this is just a time-consuming question, right? I mean, there's no real trick necessarily. Maybe, like I said, they, you have this habit of kind of just stopping short with geometry questions, just kind of getting like an X equals moment and then being done when they actually wanted something else. But otherwise, I think this is an example of a hard question that is hard because it is just tedious. There are a lot of steps, there are a lot of pieces, but each piece individually is not that hard, right? What did we really need to use in order to solve this question? Pythagorean theorem, similar triangle proportions, area of a triangle. Three basic things, two of them are given to us in the reference chart, right? Pythagorean theorem and the area of a triangle, both given to you. I didn't even use them because I haven't memorized, but you could go to that reference chart and easily get those. The only concept that's not given is that similar triangles idea. But basically, anytime you see a picture with two triangles, Odds are good you're going to use similar triangle proportions, especially if it's noticeable like this, where they're different sizes. So with geometry questions, you've got to be able to take those little pieces, those little bricks, and put them together and make that big picture. So uh, it's all just about recognizing that. And if you have those little pieces comfortably memorized, then the big picture shouldn't be that hard.